Truckers, Part 5 Duke Cedo de Haberdashery, who was also Lord Protector of the Up Escalator, Defender of the Mezzanine and Knight of the Counter, turned the thing over in his hands, very slowly. Then he tossed it aside. Very amusing, he said. The gnomes stood in a confused group at the Duke's palace, which was currently under the floorboards in the soft furnishings department. The Duke was still in armour and not very amused. So, he said, you're from outside, are you? Do you really expect me to believe you? Father, I... Angelo began. Be quiet. You know the words of Arnold Brothers, established 1905. Everything under one roof. Everything. Therefore, there can be no outside. Therefore, you people are not from it. Therefore, you're from some other part of the store. Corsetry or young fashions, maybe. We've never really explored there. No, where... Masculine began. The Duke held up his hands. Listen to me, he said, glaring at Masculine. I don't blame you. My son is an impressionable young lad. I have no doubt he talked you into it. He's altogether too fond of going to look at lorries, and he listens to silly stories, and his brain gets overheated. Now, I am not an unreasonable gnome, he added, daring them to disagree. And there is always room for a strong lad like yourself in the haberdashery guards. So let's forget this nonsense, shall we? But we really do come from outside, Masculine persisted. There is no outside, said the Duke. Except, of course, when a good gnome dies, if he has led a proper life. Then there is an outside where they will live in the splendour forever. Come now, he patted Masculine on the shoulder. Give up this foolish chatter and help us in our valiant task. Yes, but what for? said Masculine. You wouldn't want the ironmongery to take our department, would you? said the Duke. Masculine glanced at Angelo, who shook his head urgently. I suppose not, he said, but you're all gnomes, aren't you? And there's masses for everyone. Spending all your time squabbling seems a bit silly. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Angelo put his head in his hands. The Duke went red. What did you say? Masculine led back, leaned backwards to get out of the way, but he'd been brought up to be honest. He felt he wasn't bright enough to get away with lies. Well, he began. Have you never heard of honour? said the Duke. Masculine thought for a while and then shook his head. The ironmongery want to take over the whole store, said Angelo hurriedly. That would be a terrible thing, and the millinery are nearly as bad. Why? said Masculine. Why? said the Duke. Because they have always been our enemies. And now you may go, he added. Where? said Masculine. To the ironmongery, or the millinery, or the stationery. They're just the people for you. Talk go back outside for all I care said the Duke sarcastically. We want the thing back, said Masculine. The Duke picked it up and threw it at him. Sorry, said Angelo, when they had got away. I should have told you my father had rather a temper. What did you go and upset him for, said Grimmer irritably. If we've got to join up with someone, why not with him? What happens to us now? He was very rude, said Granny Morky stoutly. He'd never heard of the thing, said Torrit. Terrible, that is. Or outside. Well, oh, I was born and bred outside. Ain't no dead people there. I'm not living in any splendour, anyway. They started to squabble, which was fairly usual. Masculine looked at them. Then he looked at his feet. They were walking on a sort of short, dry grass that Angelo had said was called carpet. Something else stolen from the store above. He wanted to say, This is ridiculous. Why is it that as soon as a gnome has all he needs to eat and drink, he starts to bicker with other gnomes? There must be more to being a gnome than this. And he wanted to say, if humans are so stupid, how is it that they built this store and all these lorries? If we're that clever, then they should be stealing from us, not the other way round. They might be big and slow, but they're quite bright, really. And he wanted to add... I wouldn't be surprised if they're at least as intelligent as rats, say. 
but he didn't say any of this, because while he was thinking, his eyes fell on the thing, clasped in Torrit's arms. He was aware that there was a thought he ought to be having. He made a space in his head politely and waited patiently to see what it was, and then, just as it was about to arrive, Grimmer said to Angelo, "'What happens to gnomes who aren't in a department?' "'They lead very sad lives,' said Angelo. "'They just have to get along as best they can.' He looked as if he was about to cry. "'I believe you,' he said. "'My father says it's wrong to watch the lorries. "'They can lead you into wrong thoughts,' he says. "'Well, I've watched them for months. "'Sometimes they come in wet. "'It's not all a dream outside. "'Things happen. "'Look, why don't you sort of hang around?' I'm sure he'll change his mind.